Hello and welcome. Today I'll be joined by Jeremy Bearson, Community Manager for Stillmock Studios, which is also the developer behind V Rising. Thanks for joining me for this interview. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Uh, always a lot of fun. I have a few general questions, and then toward the end, I'm going to ask some questions submitted by the community from YouTube and Reddit. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm good to answer anything. Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Cool. So something I wanted to ask. So like a couple of weeks ago, you guys went to Gamescom. So tell me, mm -hmm. how did it go? Did you run into any fans of the game? What did you have at your booth? And can you describe it for me? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was pretty fun. Uh, just going around meeting people. Always really fun to meet a lot of other people in the industry. Uh, it's also just, you know, uh, fun to meet with other community managers and stuff, like people who can relate to the very specific <laughs> situation I'm in. Uh, so that's always, like, really nice because, ironically, we don't have, like, a lot of spaces because <laughs> I guess we're all so kind of busy doing community stuff. We don't have time to community together. Uh, but in terms of like more V Rising focused stuff, we were uh, mostly just, you know, we had a release this year and then we had the PS5 release this year. So we were just kind of getting the word out about that to people at Gamescom, just letting people know that we were here and we're still alive and uh, that we, uh, you know, that we exist. And so it was mostly just our booth was about letting people play test the game on PS5 and PC and uh just showing them what it's like uh i know it feels like everybody knows what v rising is when you're like in the community but really there is a huge amount of people who haven't really experienced the game yet you know so it's uh really nice to be able to get that out uh, i did a few stage performances for the first time ever <laughs> which was really interesting uh i was on stage with a very nice guy named renee uh, who was uh, kind of guided me through being on stage and giving me very nice leading questions so that I could uh, explain the game to uh, a crowd of people who might not have heard of us yet or didn't know too much about us. Nice. Uh, yeah, it was a very, very fun, very interesting experience. Cool. Um, so now that V Rising 1.0 is out, some players have speculated that you guys are done with the game. So is that true? What's the plan now that you guys are out of early access? And is this the end of V Rising? If not, are there going to be any changes to the frequency of updates now that the game has finally been released? Uh, so th it is true that we are uh, not done. With updates to the game we are we are uh we had a, a like a very 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 loose i wouldn't even really call it a roadmap but a sort of little thing that we plan to have another update after uh launch uh up until now we haven't had a super clear picture of exactly how big that update would be we're actually still a little bit working on that uh, and what exactly that looks like because you know in early access it was a lot more clear it's like fill out the content finish the game, make it a complete experience. Uh, and after launch, you know, it becomes a little less clear of what that means. Like, what does it mean to have another update to V Rising? Uh, if we do add more content, where does it go? Does it go at the end after everything we've already done? Because it's already quite a lot of playtime <laughs> before you get to that end thing. So do you add, just add stuff at the end? Do you add stuff in the middle? Do you fill things all throughout the map? Like, what do you do? So mm -hmm. we've been exploring that and figuring that out. I think we have come to a pretty solid conclusion as to what we want to do, which unfortunately I can't share that yet. Uh, but I can tell you that we are working on something and we will have more news about that later this year. One of the biggest things that disappointed players when 1.0 launched was the lack of global or territory sort functions with chess. I understand that you made it clear beforehand mm. that it wasn't going to be something that happens in 1.0 and also stress that you guys didn't want to rob players of the satisfaction of being able to uh, organize their chess. I happen to be one of the very few people who actually enjoy, or I, th I think it's very few, I don't know, I could be wrong, who actually enjoy intentionally organizing in this way, but even I can see that the global sort function would be a massive quality of life feature. Now that the game is out, would this be something you guys would potentially add at a later time, or is it a feature that has been laid to rest? 
Potentially. There's also, you know, when we added the, like, different types of uh, sort of, like, easy-to-sort containers, like, we sort of took a step in that direction, uh, which was not far enough for a lot of people, and uh, we've kind of heard and very much understand that. So we are exploring and thinking about other ways that we could take maybe another step in that direction. I don't know if we're, at this point, planning to completely move in that direction for the next update. Uh, I, I can't say for sure, but I will say, like, the door is open for it. Um, but, like, I, I can't say definitively that we are doing it. Okay. I mean, one of the reasons why I asked this question is because, like, you know, recently I've been playing a lot of uh, Once Human and I'm playing mm -hmm. a bunch of Power World and both those games, they have like, uh, you know, a territory storage uh, setup. So what's funny is that I actually end up organizing my chest regardless, even though it's not necessary for the, you know, um, core gameplay. It's actually interesting because I, in my personal experience and also the experience of uh, most of the people I played with when I messed around in like Power World, I haven't played once even yet, mm -hmm. uh, but when I was playing Power World, we pretty much all just like dumped all of our stuff into boxes basically at random. And if our box got full, we just made another box because boxes were super cheap and we weren't like hurting for room. So we would just dump all of our stuff in boxes and completely ignore it. And to a certain extent, I mean, that was fine. Like we enjoyed that experience just fine. So I, I'm not going to say that it's the wrong way to be, um, but I would say that it certainly was a level of gameplay that we didn't experience. Right. I, I think this is something that's kind of like, you know, there's two kinds of players. You have, you know, the, the players <laughs> who love to organize everything regardless of whether or not you need to. And then you have like players who are just like, I just want to dump it and go. I want to go out in the world and do stuff, you know? So yeah. I, I feel like even if that option were added to the game, it wouldn't necessarily take away from, uh, you know, the people who like to organize. Cause, and it didn't really occur to me until I was playing yeah. a bunch of Power World and Once Human, and I was like, wait a second, why am I organizing my chess? I don't have to do that. And then I realized, mm -hmm. oh, it's because I like to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah I think, I think it's uh... interesting. It's, a, it's an interesting, just like uh, an interesting thing when it comes to game design, right? Because when it comes to pretty much every aspect of a game, it's like, do you have to do something? Like, what does the game force you to do? And what will you just do on your own all the time anyway? Uh, and uh, when you come across questions about that, I think that's always like a very interesting, an interesting vector of game design. So finding the answer to that, uh, I, I think, is... Uh, Kind of like one of the very cool parts about player psychology. So uh, I I'm not going to say people are wrong. And I'm also not going to say like our designers are wrong. But uh, I will say that we are looking at like options for that. Okay. Because it's, it's very high on our like feature upload suggestion board. Like it's, it's, it's like super high up. There. I would say it's like so what, we're not top just going to maybe. <laughs> I, think it, it, I think it might be top one. <laughs> but top I, uh, one. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, we definitely hear that there are people who are interested in it. Um, but uh, at the same time, I mean, you, you do have a vision for a game and you do have certain things that you want that make it yours. Right. Uh, so, but is that one of those things? I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Another feature players have been asking for is a photo mode. I can definitely see why people would ask that, especially mm. for things like castle tours, group photos, role play, and a bunch of endless possibilities that would come from it. Now that the game is on PS5, there's even more need for the game to have this feature since those players won't have access to mods that we see on the PC version of the game. Is this yeah. currently being considered by the team? Um, I don't, I, I don't think I've seen it on a wish list or anything, but I can like write it down. Really? I mean, it's yeah. something that I get a lot in like my comment section, like in my videos and stuff like for like um, like developer uh, requests, like they'll say like, man, I wish they would add a photo mode or oh, I wish we mm. could, you know, have more camera options. Like I hear it like I I would even say that it's probably top five of suggestions I hear very yeah. often, at least in the PVE crowd. I'm sure PVP players probably feel somewhat similar because this isn't something that would only you know, benefit like PVE, 
but also PvP, because, I mean, nothing's more satisfying than, like, you know, winning a tournament or something and then just taking a group photo or something like that and just having, like, a really nice angle to do so. So it's just it's just one of those quality of life things that I, I just kind of yeah. wonder about. I think we have a lot of the tools already to build something like this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it might be, like, a require some ui work to like make it make it work but it might not be that difficult and i don't know i'll put the suggestion in and there's always feature creep but who knows like maybe, creep, maybe, we'll, yeah. maybe we'll make it it's <laughs> very very easy to go like oh yeah wouldn't it be cool if we added this extra thing and then suddenly <laughs> yeah but uh i have i'm i've added it to my what will definitely be a growing list of suggestions oh yeah that will come out of this interview so here's probably the hardest question of the whole interview i'm gonna i'm gonna go oh, i'm boy. just gonna lay it on you so i hope you're ready yeah. all right so back in february during the eu battle rising tournament you were asked about mod support for the game and your response was quote i'm hoping to give at least earlier access to the server side client to modders when we go into beta a few specific modders that we've worked with in the past that we can trust to act ethically and hopefully the head start they get an agreement to share their work will give a jump start to modders end quote well almost end quote there was a few other words after that but that was the gist of what you said now let's fast forward to now from what i can tell there hasn't been a very good distribution of resources when it comes to mod support so for example uh there are modders who make mods for their own server but there are very few public mods that everyone has access to can you give me an ex some examples of mods that have been shared publicly with the community that have been created by those same modders who got that head start? Uh, well, I don't think I can give great examples of mods that they particularly have worked on because I myself don't really use mods. So I'm not really sure. I, I, like, I don't personally know a lot of like specific mods that people use. But I will say that the modders that we did give access to were collaborating on making basically a modding framework. Uh, I think it's called Bloodstone. That basically is, is the basis for allowing people to mod stuff. So without that framework, they nothing works at all. So they were able to get a little bit of a head start on that. And I think they got it working a lot faster than they would have if they hadn't had access to that stuff. So it, it gave them a little bit of a head start to getting things working as close to day one as possible. Uh, I can't say for certain what it would have been like if we didn't do that, or I, I can't say that our contribution, uh, which was really just giving them a little bit of earlier access, was massive or anything. Uh, I, I don't want to take away from the, uh, the sort of work that they put in uh, mm -hmm. and take any credit from them because it, it really is just all them i guess i guess um, what i'm trying to like figure out is like so let's say you know we're, you mentioned bloodstone as like i guess like the framework right that they that they can use to like you know mod for the game you know yeah. is there a possibility of like an sdk for the game in general and if not uh, would you suppose uh, what what would you propose to be a potential solution to this issue? Because right now it just seems like you know a very few number of people have access to that, and then they're not as um, and then the other people who are like making like public mods are not able to reach that same level of control or um, possibility just because there's a lot there's a lot more um, hurdles for them to get to the same mm. result. So like, is there like a middle ground here? Is there, you know, an SDK as a possibility? Sure, I'm pretty sure if you join the modding discord, they're, they're actually very aggressively like open source. Uh, they, they very, very are about like sharing their, um, sharing their knowledge and, and sharing like their access. Uh, we don't give them any sort of like special access beyond just sort of letting them get an advance into the into the last patch. So uh, there shouldn't be anything that we provide that offers them any leg up uh, as of now. Uh, I, I don't think we have any plans right now for uh, V Rising to offer mod support. Uh, it 
just at this point, I think would be incredibly difficult for us to implement a framework. Like it would be a, be a huge project on our end to do that. Uh, it would it would have a massive impact on development. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think it's something that we can do for this project, but maybe for like a future project. I think if we worked on something else, and I'm absolutely not saying that we are, uh, we are currently focused on vRising this one. Right. Uh, but if we were to work on something else, I think we would want to have, uh, we, we would be taking that into consideration much earlier. I think we have, uh, during this project, really come to understand the importance of modding and making that more accessible in the future. Um, we've talked about it uh, internally, and it's something we would be interested in going forward. Uh, but I don't think we can apply in this project. Here's a suggestion, or at least something that I've heard tossed around, is maybe like a map creator or like a map editor, because I've heard a lot of people like mention things like saying how, you know, they wish the hollowed mountains was like a much larger space because they, you know, they, they hate that there's only four plots in a really nice snowy area because nowhere else mm -hmm. in the game do you really get that nice like atmosphere, for example, or there'll be people who want to have more uh, land and silver light because, well, they want to be close to the yeah. silver mines, but mm -hmm. there's only like, what, three, four territories in the top of that area. So, I mean, just stuff like that, like, do you think maybe, maybe you would know this, if there's like any like tools or anything that's currently made that might facilitate that to maybe increase like the longevity of the game? Because like, I feel like without, like, and I understand like what you're saying with, you know, the game was not made with like mod support in mind from like the, from like mm -hmm. the beginning of its conception, obviously, but you know, the reality is like the game is already out. The game is out. People love this game. And I feel like without that mod support, it's just going to fizzle out and die over time. Um, so, like, I, I don't know. I'm just curious to know what your thoughts are on something like a, a map creator or, like, a map editor for the game. Making a map creator or a map editor would be a pretty colossal effort. Uh, it, would, it would be huge. Mm -hmm. Like, to give... Like if if you might you might remember uh, during Gloom Rot we made like additional floors and castles possible, right? Uh, and that was a huge effort uh, to to make that work. Uh, one that we weren't even really sure we could do, uh, and and we did pull it off in the end. But it took us like a long time to even talk about it because like we weren't even sure that it was possible to pull it off. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I'm proud to say we did, but the uh, just thinking about the scale of some of a feature like that and then imagine the scale of a feature that would allow you to create an entire world in v rising uh that's it, it's it would be a, a massive ask right um and require a lot of resources from us that i think it, like the idea sounds very cool and i love the idea personally but i it's an I expensive don't idea though is super expensive yeah uh, and uh yeah i just i just don't know if it makes sense for this project uh i i can't really speak on it because i'm not the game director and i don't make those decisions but i i think uh if we were to do something like that it would be a a, a large focus for the studio for like a long time to make it happen let's move on to some gameplay questions so in the past players were able to use enemy vampires crafting stations. So like, for example, they could walk up uh, and let's say someone had like crafting stations mm -hmm. outside their castle, or maybe they infiltrated their castle, snuck in, and they could just build an entire set for themselves, right? Yeah. Um, it allowed players to kind of have this cool, like nomadic play style where, you know, they didn't have to like build a castle, but they could just run around and just, you know, kind of wreak havoc a little, but like in a fun, exciting way. Um, mm -hmm. and when that feature was removed, you know, th there were players who kind of missed that play style and they wished that it would return. Why was the feature removed in the first place? And are there plans to bring it back? This is kind of embarrassing for me because I didn't know that you couldn't do that anymore. Mm. 
So. Well, see that so. you learn something new. I mean, you yeah. know, that's the thing. That's why you're here. You know, if <laughs> if you weren't willing to hear out, you know, uh, some of these things, then how would you know, right? But yeah, I mean, I can't know everything. This so, is something uh, that that's... I would I would like to know, like at some point, like because this is such like I didn't know that for the longest time because I, you know, I'm more of a PVE player. And, you know, mm -hmm. in a conversation with some PvP peeps that, you know, I, I speak with, um, you know, that's been mentioned and it just kind of blew my mind. Like, yeah, why was that removed? You know, <laughs> like that sounds crazy, you know, um, yeah. especially because like in the past you couldn't move your castle, but now you can. And, you know, especially on like mm -hmm. servers with a bunch of people, it was kind of a challenge. So some people found that nomadic play style to just be fun. Right. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's something to bring back to the team. Maybe ask them about because I I just find that to be very interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of curious as to what exactly are the parameters that you like can't do. Like you just can't use other people's crafting stations, I guess. Yeah. So like um, you know, it, it was it was kind of interesting because then you know, imagine like you you start is a it game. That you can't use their crafting stations, or that you don't have access to the same technologies as them. If you access you can't their use crafting. their crafting stations, I think. Okay. Yeah, because I know sure. you can like if, if you access someone else's, and I know this because we've had problems with this on. If you access someone's like, um, not crafting. Crafting isn't the word. Like a production station, like a like a smithy or something. Mm -hmm. Not smithy. Uh, like a furnace. You mm -hmm. can rename their furnace, uh, which <laughs> can be an issue because you know you can rename it to something, you know, awful, and then there's no evidence that you did that. Right. Uh, and then they report you for being racist. <laughs> and, now, and then I go in and be like, oh, well, we can't prove that they did it. Um, but yeah, it's weird that you can do that, but you can't access their crafting stations in the same way. Yeah, I, I always thought that was kind of strange. Like when I found out about that, it just kind of blew my mind. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's probably some sort of good technical reason why that decision was made uh and like this sort of nomadic play style might not have been considered because it's not something i've really heard much about to be honest mm -hmm. uh and if anything i've heard probably people being upset about uh having like random people be able to join a server that aren't in a clan and group up with the people a, a, a clan that they're like not with to like help zerg other people like if they have access to those crafting oh, stations yeah. it sort of enables that uh i don't think we've actively done anything to i mean like curb that i don't think that would be the reason for it but um i mean yeah. if they were so gonna go that far i was gonna say like if they were gonna go that far wouldn't they just like have that other group like make them their gear anyway like it wouldn't even be a problem yeah, for them I mean, technically i mean yeah i mean it's very much still an issue hmm. all right um so something to bring up though i'm adding it to the list yeah <laughs> um there's been some really interesting community feedback regarding balancing of pvp uh when your mm. team gets a suggestion what is the process do you decide well do you yourself decide what gets looked at by the team through like translation i don't know if like the team speaks like fluid english or anything like that because i know you guys are like based in sweden so like our Swedes are really good at English, so okay. they can read anything I can read. But okay, uh, yeah, uh, I actually I, I barely know any Swedish. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm trying, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I will sometimes bake down things into what I feel the players are like trying to say and show it to them. Uh, I the really important thing to me is that I am not it is not my job to decide what is and is not good feedback and what is or is not something that the team needs to see. I think if anybody says anything, the team should see it. Uh, and I try to show it to them in a way that takes a consideration for the proportion of people saying it. I try to give context for where it's coming from. If this is coming from like players who haven't played much PvP or players who play like a ton of PvP or players who are speaking from a context of mostly like arena PvP. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to, when I'm getting feedback, I, I try to be very clear about what sort of feedback I'm looking for so that uh, if it, they are people who mostly do like arena PvP, they understand that I'm looking for like more open world stuff and they give it to me in that context. It helps you know, put things in. So basically I try to give 
um, as much of an overview as I can. I try to give as much specific feedback I can. I try not to edit it as much as possible. Uh, and uh, the only time I will edit it is if uh, it needs to be formatted, um, if it is uh, grammatically has issues, uh, or if there is something that a lot of people have said uh, that it would make more sense to just condense into one thing. Um, mm -hmm. Also, typically when I give feedback, I try to give feedback more in terms of what the player's frustrations are and what uh, instead of like what solutions they're suggesting because a lot of times the solutions might uh, look like it's trying to solve something that is not necessarily the frustration the player is having so when i'm talking to players i'm usually trying to get them to communicate exactly why they're upset uh, so that i can bring that to the designers because that gives them a lot more room to work they can often take several frustrations and solve them with one elegant solution instead of bandaging it in 50 different ways. Um, right. I mean, something something that's been uh, coming up is like I've come, well, at least that's come across my feed when I'm like going through YouTube. Every once in mm -hmm. a while, I'll see a, a creator come out with a video uh, talking about PvP balance. And, you know, of course, everyone has an opinion about, you know, what is, you know, op what is not op but there are mm -hmm. some things that i think can universally be agreed upon now i'm not like super into pvp but i was wondering if like that might also be part of the feedback that you're kind of considering when you're um suggesting things to your teams like you mentioned that you know you don't really want to you know necessarily you know put suggestions in there as well but i think mm -hmm. that in a way that's kind of like I mean, it might not be as helpful, I think, just because, like, I think some of these suggestions are actually pretty good. I mean, it, even if, even if, like, the team looks at the suggestion and says, uh, you know, I don't think this will work because X, Y, Z, I mean, wouldn't it make more sense for them to kind of, like, decide that instead of, like, like, and I don't mean, like, for every single thing, obviously, like, I don't mean, like, you know, oh, uh, yeah, this might detail. When but... I'm giving, when when I'm giving them like feedback, uh, when I say I mostly try to take out player suggestions, I mean like I try to when there is like, for instance, if I am baking something down into something like a little bit quicker for them to get through, so they don't have to read like seven hundred things to hear the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. I will take that idea and I'll bake it down into something like players are frustrated with this thing because of this reason. Uh, and this is a common suggestion. Like I will very often oh, put like, okay. a common suggestion as to, as to what they uh, feel would solve the issue. And I, like I said, I, um, so the way I view my job is my job is to facilitate communication between the players and the studio. And uh, it goes both ways. Like I'm trying to make the players understand where we're coming from. And I'm also trying to make the studio understand where the players are coming from. And I don't view it as my job to uh, edit that or right. add my opinion to it. So I'm my goal is 100% to just take all the information I can, communicate as efficiently as possible to the studio, and I leave all the design decisions Although, whether this is a good suggestion or a bad suggestion, or if this solution would work, I leave that all up to game design. All right, cool. Um, so, with the 1.0 launch, you know, it, it came with the introduction of the Ruins of Mordium. This zone was supposed to keep players engaged for longer, um, but it doesn't seem to have achieved that goal, especially for PvE. Once players have grinded maybe one or two of their favorite weapons, fatigue starts to set in and they feel like they're just done. So is there something the team is working on? And if so, are the goals of this new area still the same or are you guys considering a rework for it? Uh, I don't know if we're considering a rework for it. Uh, they might be. I, I haven't actually talked to them about uh, how they feel about Mortium. Um, I have only very recently kind of gotten back in the office, so I'm, I'm not super mm -hmm. up to date on, on everything that everyone is thinking. Right. Uh, but uh, I will say that uh, probably the, the goal of V Rising, uh, we don't really, I don't think we really want to like tell you how to, what your, what your goals should, for the game should be outside of the things that we put directly in front of you. Like, I don't think we want to say like, this has to be a game that you play forever. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that especially in PVE, like once you're done with like the content that you need to grind every weapon, like if you want the completionist feeling of having every weapon, then uh, you should do that. Right. Uh, but if you're perfectly happy after you've beaten Dragon and you've done everything, and like we don't want you to play until you hate the game, <laughs> we, that's a. Uh, but if you do enjoy the game, like if you do, in, if you do want that out of the game, uh, we would like to be able to provide that. I think to 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 a reasonable extent. Right. Um, so like something that I've heard is like a suggestion is that maybe like having like an option in the settings, like game settings, uh, for players to reduce the price of items offered by the traders in that zone specifically without affecting the rest of the traders in the game. Because like, you know how, um, you know, I think it's like what, 1500 greater Stygian yeah, shards I, I or something? I think I've heard that. I think I've heard that suggestion before. Yeah, um, I, that, that comes up a lot. So I was wondering if that was something that, you know, maybe could be done even. I, I don't... don't know if I put a suggestion in for that. Uh, I might have before I left for my stuff that I was going right. for. Uh, but uh, I have just written it down. It's going to requests. <laughs> so I, it will be in our system. I think it's a good suggestion. Right. I mean, it, yeah, it's definitely, at least I think so, too. Yeah, I mean, one thing, we're definitely going to be adding more, um, like, uh, server settings uh, right. in whatever our next, like, bigger content update is. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I'll I've noticed, on yeah, I've noticed that, like, in the server settings, I think, like, uh, some settings that were once written there are, like, not just explicitly written there anymore. So, like, I think, like, mm -hmm sun damage modifier i think was like one of those things that just wasn't like in the back end like if you go to like the files like because i'd be going in there and adding stuff in and i was like hmm i thought there was a sun damage setting and i think i had to like manually type it in and it worked but i just thought yeah. it was weird that like there wasn't like i i guess what i'm saying is i think it would be helpful to have a like written list of potential settings so that players yes. can just look at it in one master list instead of going to this website, that website, this video, that video to find all that information. We um, actually do have a master list in uh, the View Rising Discord, but I and also on our um, support page. But I do think that there should be a more accessible way maybe to get like, it, like potentially straight through in game somehow. Uh, oh, that's a good ideally, idea. Ideally, I think most information should be available directly in game. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah, uh, that, um, is something like, I, I, we tried to simplify those lists to make it easier for players coming in to be like less intimidated. Cause we found that like a lot of players would come and they would have more fun if they were comfortable, like editing these settings and just making the game how they want to make it. But it's so intimidating when they look at it. Right. So we took a lot of steps to try and make it less intimidating. I think, uh, we're very open to the idea that some of these ideas maybe uh, were less successful than others. So, yeah, I think the idea of adding some stuff back uh, in a way that doesn't drive people away wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I don't think we'd be against that. Yeah, I think you guys did a pretty good job with like, uh, you know, the in game server settings. Like when I saw that option and just kind of looked through it, I was like, oh, this is great. Um, I think what people are maybe looking for is for an expansion to that in game setting yeah. setup. So that, you know, things like sun damage modifier would be listed on there, you know, and, and things yeah, I like think, that. Uh, maybe something like a more advanced, like the, the like advanced tab underneath right. could maybe expand it out to something. I, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to like the UI designers and the server settings people and see if we can come up with something. All right. So the studio finally had their first launch on console for PS5. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. How it did was hard. The, yeah, I bet. How how did the release go? And are you guys looking at potentially adding the game to Xbox? Uh, I think the release went pretty well. Uh, I th I think we are uh, pretty happy with it, uh, especially because uh, there were a lot of challenges with getting it to run on PS5 the way we want it to run, um, and we were really really pushing up until like the last minute to make that work, mm -hmm. uh, and we've been patching it. Uh, I think we patched it quite a bit. Um, and there are lots of challenges uh, with console uh, that you just you just have to experience it and get through it to to know how to do it. So uh, I think that's really good, especially for like any future releases we do uh, doing console ports. We, we now have a lot more experience with it. 
Uh, and it was a lot less rocky <laughs> than, than it could have been. So that's nice. Um, as for the question about the Xbox, uh, I'm not aware of anything. Uh, so I, I can't really speak on it. Okay. So um, I have some DLC questions. Uh, as you know, yeah. I spend a lot of time on PvE side of things. I mostly focus on castle building and decorating. And with the release of the Castlevania DLC, we got lights whose colors can be changed. Is the team mm. potentially looking at going back to previously released DLCs and adding that option to those lights as well? And also, are there any plans for any DLCs in the future? Kind of a loaded question. Uh <laughs> was the last was sorry i was writing down add light changing options to previous dlcs on my request list uh, <laughs> <laughs> and i missed the end of the question was um, uh the end of the question uh are we planning any future dlcs yeah okay um so uh i wouldn't be so, we're we're definitely not against the idea of going back and adding stuff to previous dlcs uh i know in um bloodline champions not bloodline Cha yeah in uh battle right we went back and added like color variations to some of the stuff in one of the dlcs like after the fact as like a fact as like an additional thank you for having bought this thing mm -hmm. uh so it's something we've done before so i don't think it's impossible that we would do it again uh, adding stuff to already existing dlcs but uh I don't know if particularly we are planning to do that, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we were open to doing it. Uh, so I wrote it down uh, to uh, something to mention. I think it's mostly just something we hadn't considered doing. So it, it could be cool. Um, as for if we're planning to do future DLCs, um, I can't speak to any specific ones that we're planning on doing, but uh, like I, I would be surprised if we did another patch and then didn't do a DLC. We, we kind of have that pattern. You do a patch, you do a DLC with it. I think um, one... So I actually didn't write this question down because I, I forgot to write it down, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, <laughs> the... As far as like the Halloween themed DLC that we got, uh, you know, for... PC, is there any possibility of that ending up on PS5 as well? I get that question quite a lot. Oh, I was just asking about this, I think. Uh, I don't think I've gotten an answer yet. Um, okay. But I think uh, it's possible this Halloween that it will be on the PS5. All right, you heard that, guys? Fingers crossed. <laughs> possible. <laughs> Possibly. Like I said, fingers yeah. crossed. Uh, <laughs> So before I get into the community questions, I would like to make one selfish request, just one, okay? Okay. But I'll give some context. So with the introduction of the color wheel, I, mm -hmm. um, it was probably one of the most needed additions to the game. Is there a possibility that we could add black to the color wheel for lights so that we can turn them off? Hmm. Uh, I have no idea, honestly, but uh, I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> it might be that lights, like just the way they work, that they can't have an off option. Uh, mm. It might be that it's just like part of like the object that it has to emit light. Um, but if there is a way to do it, uh, I'm, I wouldn't know. So I'm just writing it down. All right, cool. So I'm going to move on to some community questions and suggestions. So I'm just going to see what you have to say about any of these questions and all that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just going to go from question to question, kind of like spit them at you and see what you got to say. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first question is from Reddit and it's from straight try six, seven, six, one. And they ask, when is proximity voice chat coming to console or PS five? Opening a typing window with a controller is not a good alternative. Mm. Uh, I'm sure that there is a weird technical limita limitation with VVox that's causing this. Uh, but because I uh, actually was not really around for the PS5 launch, uh, I, have, I, I have no idea what's going on with the te technical limitations there. I'm not up to date on it at all. So uh, I, that's something I'd have to check on. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that I don't have a cool answer for that. So another question from Reddit from Lupa Lisa. 
When will we expect to have partition wipe cadence? Right now, all servers wipe in sync and reset in sync. From a customer experience, this is terrible for longevity. There should be an official server wiping day, uh, sorry, server wiping daily for people who want to start on any day of the week. Right now, only community servers are populated because they do follow this cadence rule based on demand. Uh, that is something that would actually, unless we had a lot of servers up, that would be impossible for us to fulfill um, in every region. Uh, also in every region because of just the limitation of uh, hardware available. Like uh, we have some, like there is some amount of trouble on official servers of uh, just having enough variety of even the fairly normal amount of servers, like in South America, for instance, or in uh, like uh, the SE, SEA region. Like they, it is actually very difficult to get the amount of servers we would want to even do like fulfill very basic needs. Mm -hmm. It's also, we, we don't really view this as the purpose of official servers. Like uh, official servers are meant to be sort of like a very basic experience uh, for if you are just starting the game and you want to play, or if you just want to play on a fairly reliable server that is fairly unmoderated, uh, I, I think the best experience is always going to be on community servers, uh, and that's why uh, we like to promote them when we can. And also, if you are looking for like a daily wipe experience, I think that's something that the community can definitely do for itself um that i would i would entrust to them uh it, it's just we're we don't really view ourselves as like a live service mm -hmm. and uh our official servers are more of like a comfortable reliable baseline that you can you can hop on uh to have like the super basic view rising experience yahid agneb 4947 asks are there any plans on adding more options for decorating the exterior of the castle so, for example, rooftops. Like to change what the rooftop looks like, I, I yeah. think would be the point of that. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I mean, that would be really cool. I think we've talked about that a little bit. Um, the thing is, rooftops are like so specific in terms of like how often you actually get use out of that. Like if people only see that if they're flying over it in bat form or if like you have a setup where you have like part of a roof and then like flooring next to that roof mm -hmm. and then it's like open kind of uh i mean it, it's it's not not bad like I, I think it might be good i think in general we would just get a lot more mileage out of spending our time on like other stuff that you look at more often but i don't know i, I think i i think it could be cool i'm writing it down the next question is from youtube side from hiriko kagetane and they're asking, are there any plans for adding PvE castle raids or adding an area or options to duel in a PvE server? Um, we did play with some, like, we did try to get some dueling stuff in time for 1.0 uh, that wasn't quite as functional and wasn't quite as clean as we would like when 1.0 came around. So it's something we messed with, and it's possible we will have something like that for the future um but i can't guarantee anything all right the next question well this actually is more of a suggestion from the youtube side from repsage dollars 2936 they say please add sitting emotes or add dancing action to the game <laughs> sitting, I, sitting emotes yeah so like for example like you can't sit and emote at the same time right now oh like emotes that you can do while you're sitting yeah i think that's something that's less likely to get added but it's possible so i'm writing it all right and uh, i will there are animators have <laughs> investigated old-timey dances uh to potentially oh yeah i remember i think you mentioned that it. yeah <laughs> yeah they, uh i've seen some pretty funny stuff all right, so the next question is from Reddit from 007 Sparta, and they ask, why can't I change server values to literally anything I want? Like inventory stacks is limited to 3x, why? Blood Moon su simply cannot be set to always on, why? Why is there no way to change Blood Moon movement speed buff? Um, 
in terms of like why isn't there a way to change blood moon movement speed buff it was probably because we just didn't think oh no, it, no. Uh, not just the movement speed but also like the um like frequency of blood moon so like having it always on yeah oh yeah 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 i'm, I'm, I'm gonna get into that oh um, sorry go ahead for those things uh so like everything needed to have some kind of limit from what i understand uh a lot of things have limits because if you went outside of those limits it would destroy your server or it would break things, or it would mess your memory up, and uh, it would like delete your save, and it would be unsalvageable, and then you would lose your save and be really, really sad. Uh, so a lot of those limits are there to sort of protect you from making a mistake that you could not possibly know that you're about to make, because it feels really bad when you go in and uh, you, I don't know, just like mess with something, and then it obliterates your thing. And but like there is no warning that it instant would obliterate corruption. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's just better to have limitations in place to stop you from making a horrible mistake. Um, I don't know how necessary all of them are, though, and I don't think it would hurt to re-examine some and give some like wider parameters. So I wrote it down. Wider options on server settings. It is written. Cool. Uh, the next question comes from YouTube from Krieger x 3 m and I've already asked the first part of this question, so I'm going to hop to like the second half of it. Mm -hmm. Are we still going to get the servant mechanic overhaul or changes, and are there any plans for future DLC collaborations? Um, I am, We have talked about some ideas around servants. I'm not sure. Uh, with like every feature that we talk about, it's like, how can we fit this in? Uh, how reasonable is it like to actually like make this work? How experimental is it? Like how likely is it that we'll get it to work? So like, what are the odds that we invest a bunch of time in trying to get it to work and then it's a waste of time and then suddenly uh, the next patch comes and you guys are like, why is it so small? Um, <laughs> so yeah. I can't say for sure like what's going on with servants in that aspect, but I can say that like we're interested in doing more stuff with it, and we think it's an important part of the vampire fantasy, and it would be cool to do more servant stuff. Uh, one thing I don't think we're probably going to do at any point that I know people ask about is like bringing a servant out in the world with you to go like help fight people with you. There are just so many issues with that uh, that we uh, probably aren't going to explore that. But, like, more stuff you could potentially do with your servants, more stuff to make your castle feel alive, uh, more ways to interact with them uh, is stuff that we are considering and, like, looking into. Rockschild from YouTube says, or asks, are there any planned events for the game in the future, like tournaments or in-game seasonal events? In-game seasonal events, uh, I, I don't know about that. It, because of the sort of way our game works, like, doing, like, seasons and like and like events like an in-game stuff like that is sort of tough to do because we we're not like we're not like a thing with a central server that everything is connected to you yeah. know like you can't like log in and get like a login bonus where you get access to like a new cosmetic that you can put on your vampire like that every all like data and stuff is stored on each individual server which has a lot of huge advantages uh, but it has some, like, minorly annoying disadvantages. Like, we don't really have a way to implement something like this or something seasonal. But, again, like, we're not really, like, a live service game, so that's not something we're aiming to do. Um, so I, I don't predict any kind of seasonal events or something. Uh, it's not completely crazy that we would come up with something that happens, like, you know, every... 180 in-game days something some sort of event happens or something like that. That, right. that might be something we do but nothing in in like the meta sense of like a seasonal thing like, oh yeah i think the question was probably more aimed towards like um you know like let's say like for the fall season you know how we have that like halloween dlc or like yeah. you know maybe for the winter season we get like you know a, a dlc where it's just like outfits you know, for like winter, yeah. like winter coats or something like fancy, like winter coats for like our vampires. I don't know. Maybe we get and in terms of just doing like <laughs> a fun community thing, like like they said, doing a tournament or doing like a capture the flag event or something. Right. Like those are the sort of really fun things that I, I would like to do more of and I would like to find time to do more of. And, and maybe I will. Um, it's something I'm looking into right now, actually. From Reddit, helpful brother 5831 asks, 
why can't I pick up X number of items instead of trying to split stacks until I get the right amount? That is a good question. I will, def I will defend my designers till the end of, of time on almost anything, but this is one thing that I have <laughs> a personal vendetta about. I would like to be able to just click it, and to, I, I have no idea why we don't do it. Yell and scream from the rooftops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bat and <laughs> cause trouble. <laughs> Get them to do it, please. All right, yeah, because I, I, alone am I not hear this capable. question. I've done everything I can. I probably hear this question like once a month. Like, <laughs> I just like I don't know. I wake up and I, I I wake up and I look at my ceiling in my room every day and I I, I ask myself this question. I look and I say, <laughs> why can't we just click a button and then type fifty three and then I'm I'm holding fifty three of that thing. Yeah, maybe I don't need a mathematics degree after all. If if that ends up coming to fruition, <laughs> the amount of time I spend just like like. All right, control click and then click it over here and control click and over here and wait, how many more times do I have to have half of this to get to right? and then you accidentally put one of the stacks on top of one of the other stacks and like god damn it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, sorry. Uh, you good. might be able to tell I've, I've had like a It's a crisis stressful time with this particular issue. It, it's a crisis. It has to be addressed. <laughs> I'm clumsy and it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, it's clumsy, it's hard. I'm bad at math and I have ADHD. Same. The same. <laughs> so the, um, the Roar on Reddit asks, how basically optimistic would it be to hope that we could one day decorate our castles with Vardoran's full variety of awesome pieces of furniture and similar sets, such as Black Roo's blackboards, Dracula's monuments, and Maja's tables? that we can get all of them uh i have no idea i think some of those things just like straight up would not fit correctly uh because of the way that like placing items works like there's a reason why we can't place things at like 45 degree angles mm -hmm. uh etc uh and i think like if you sized some of those objects like they would not work unless it's like a level designer literally like piecemealing it onto spots uh, so not all of them probably, uh, but we could probably add more if people have like a wish list. Okay. Should I accumulate a wish list? Cause I can probably do yeah. that. <laughs> if you send me a wish list. I will make sure the art team sees it. Cause okay. they are always asking me for like suggestions of like more pieces that we can add. Okay. Clockwork mansion on Reddit asks currently lights shine through walls and floors. Is there any chance this will be fixed? Could and could there be a clan specific version of the dust caller? I'd like to, uh, sorry, I prefer for my prefer. Oh my god, I can't word. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, I know exactly what you're gonna say anyway. You're, yeah, he, he means like that he's he does he wants it so his dust if he uses his dust caller, it goes to a specific castle. They're asking for like a just separate whatever one. is the closest thing. Yeah, yeah, like if there could be like a new one where it's like, okay, it only goes to my castle. Um, really quick, something I saw that I remember I saw as like a reply to this question on Reddit is that someone mm -hmm. mentioned that maybe a solution to this could be like making it so that you can enable and disable prison cells so that like prison cells will not accept anyone in their in the cell if they're disabled for example so that was something i think I... that's one option one thing i might suggest when i bring this up um is so like one of the benefits to making the territory system is we were able to like it is a base system that allowed us to build other systems on top of it like the ability to move castles for instance was a system that we were able to build only because we have the territory system mm -hmm. um I think a good example of how we might be able to reuse that technology is like the ability to select a territory is something that shows up in the move a territory system. So we could potentially take that and add it to the dust color somehow. Like the dust color opens up like a little piece of UI and you can just click on the castle you want to send it to. Like maybe something like that would be cool. That's a good idea. It's interesting. Um, another question from Reddit from Arclord Omega. LX is, can we please, please, please be able to change the staircase design without needing it, uh, without needing to first erase the stair and everything around it? 
this is uh, something that I found frustrating in my own situation, especially because when you remove the stairs, it removes the flooring under the stairs, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, can be quite frustrating. It's so, like a black uh, hole. <laughs> yeah, it's a, the stairs are a powerful beast. Uh, I will add this as a suggestion, some sort of easier way to change stairs. I, I, something that I kind of like thought of like as a way to fix this potentially would be like, you know how like for the wallpapers, you can hover the wall and then like, you know, you can apply a wallpaper and all that. And you know how we have like the color wheels, right? I mm -hmm. wonder if we could do something like that, but with like skins for the staircases. So like, for example, you place a staircase and then like, uh, if you want to change the way it looks like, let's say you have the stone staircase, but you want the wooden ones, you can just maybe like, you know, use a, instead of a color wheel, like a, like a design wheel or something. And then you can just change it to look wooden or change it to look stone or change it to look like it's made of iron or something. Yeah. I think even like, that would be nice. Uh, it might be sort of difficult to implement that. Cause like, if you do like a color wheel, for instance, it's like all the same colors all the time. You just need one color wheel. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you did that, it would have to be like, which stairs do you own? And then have to like generate based on that, which might be a little annoying. Uh, Maybe. But honestly, if you could just normally replace the stairs, like just build that staircase over the other staircase. That'd be uh, great. I think that would be ideal because it would also be consistent with the way most other things work. Right. So except for yeah. um, I don't think it works like that with uh, fences, though, either. I think with fences, you can't overwrite fences. Yeah, weird with fences. And also with. So, uh, I think torches and a few other things. But yeah, right. anyway, I um, have written both <laughs> suggestions <laughs> here on my list. Yeah, and I know you've been asked Which before. My list is now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh my goodness. 14. 14 items long, not counting subheaders. Yeah, and of course, I, I know this comes up a lot too, but um, something else that I don't remember if another question asked is uh, something about like. Uh, being able to add like carpets to stairs, for example, that might be oh, also something to else. Stairs. Yeah. yeah, sounds like sounds like you've been talking to Stunlock, not us, the guy named Stunlock. Well, no one specific. I just see it pop up a lot as a question, so I just brought there it up. There is someone specific, and it's Stunlock. But yeah, I have <laughs> written it. It is uh, something that I've brought up before, and it made uh, the artist I was talking to go, "Oh." So, I mean, presumably they, it sounds like a good idea, but I, I think it could just be another cool variation of stairs, probably. Okay. Uh, this question comes from XE1R0, and they ask, can we have familiars, those who were willing to join us against Dracula or whoever the next big bad will be, that will join our castle based on reputation system that we gain by beating certain bosses or specific accomplishments? that are merchants, uh, sorry, that are merchants and base defense. Oh, this is quite a loaded question. Maybe you can recruit one like to follow servants. you. Yeah, it sounds like, it sounds like they want, <laughs> it like, like it sounds like they want, like, a, an advanced servant, but it's a familiar instead, and they were suggesting yeah, maybe and, recruiting it or something. It just, it just sounds very similar to the, and I'm not, I'm not by any means trying to say, like, this is, like, a bad suggestion or anything, but it sounds right. very similar to, like, would you, could we improve servant functionality? Right. It's, like, almost identical. Uh, or give us an advanced servant that in fiction is, like, a different thing. Uh, and the answer is, I don't know, maybe like it, uh, I, I've seen some cool ideas around that, both in the community and internally around the idea of like a more advanced servant. Uh, there's even been ideas thrown around about, uh, like tying this to other interesting systems. Um, like it could be a good way to explain the addition of like new systems in fiction. Uh, so I don't know, maybe, uh, but I, I, I can promise nothing. All right. Familiar uh, is a cool idea though. Yeah. The next question from Reddit is from the Expletus. Will they make instant dungeons with bosses or rare new items? Instance dungeons? Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we have any plans for instance dungeons. I think it runs a little bit counter to the sort of world design uh, of like a, like an open world survival game. Mm -hmm. um, it also, like, if you add instances, it creates a lot of, of sort of problems, like how are people going to use instance dungeons to like hide or 
store things like like if somebody's like oh we're going to be raided uh i'm going to store all my important stuff on my character and then run away to this instance dungeon where nobody can reach me <laughs> like there's uh yeah uh, there are things like that that you have to kind of think about um but uh i i don't think we have any plans for instance dungeons right now it's uh, again an idea that has been thrown around but uh nothing at the moment um, so another question that's kind of similar to some other questions that were asked, but there was like a couple of like newer things that I didn't mention is also from Reddit by I am Ballfrog, and they ask as someone PVE focused, my main ones would be, can we configure the speed of servant missions? Can we configure servants to auto deposit loot in chests? Can we toggle to craft from Castle or Room, which is a question we already went over? And mm -hmm. can we configure servants to collect or kill vermin nest or crypt mods that collect the loot? So basically, can we have them like kill and collect, not just kill, if that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, I remember this is something I thought about when like I've I first like when we first added the servant mission, I was messing around with it and like my dude just kind of and like i first built like a thing that made skeletons outside and then my servant immediately walked outside and murdered my skeleton like the second it spawned and i was like rude <laughs> <laughs> and then he just like left the thing on the ground and i was like i feel like you should be picking that up yeah it seems <laughs> odd it seems and weird and it's, it's so funny i can't... i think it would be kind of funny to have a sort of automated system where you just have like a big pile of grave yard uh, like a, a bunch of gravestones spawning things that your servants are then next to and they walk out and kill the things and collect them for you like i think that would be a cool way to automate things uh i i think uh in general using servants to like automate stuff uh that you have kind of outgrown doing uh is like an interesting avenue of like what to do with them mm -hmm. uh so uh these are all decent ideas, but also just fall under the exact same thing of like, are we going to overhaul servants and add more stuff to them? And the answer is maybe once more. Uh, this is just sort of under that same umbrella, like under the exact same things that we talked about of of what we consider servants, like the those different uses they could have. In terms of whether or not we could add a setting to speed up servant missions, uh, it's something that I think I've put in a ticket about already, just like suggesting that we add that because I've seen it just a few times. Mm -hmm. You already can effectively do that by just going like increasing the amount servant missions give. So by doing a two hour mission, you're effectively doing the same thing as doing like a 24 hour mission. But right. uh, it's still that's two not hours, the same though. as speeding them up. <laughs> yeah. Still two hours. So yeah. it's not the same as speeding them up. Uh, and I've put in the suggestion. Also from Reddit. It's from Available Angle 9474, and they ask, will we get basements in the future with basements, yeah. potentially stairs or anything like that that go downwards instead of upwards? Probably not. Probably not. Um, yeah. Uh, base, basically, doing basements would be the same level of difficult that adding additional floors was mm -hmm. and for the benefit of giving you the exact same thing we've already given you with additional floors. So just the difficulty versus the actual benefit we would receive in the game of like adding that feature. It just feels like we could it. use our time much better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't get uh, me wrong. I I I want to be underground and I want to be a dingy <laughs> little ground worm and I want to I want to be like down there and have my cool little dungeon down there. Uh, Imagine but, you, you just use your rat form to go underground somehow. It would be so fun. But the the aesthetic benefit of it is really like all there is, uh, right. and it's just not worth the the incredible effort it would take. Oh, here's an interesting one from Reddit by Integrator74, and they ask. Can I change my cursor color so lost in a lot of battles? Like they get like they lose their cursor while they're fighting, essentially, and they want to be able to change the color of their cursor. Yeah, I've uh this is something that I've brought up that kind of got lost in I th I think like the many, many other suggestions we were going through for 1.1. Mm -hmm. But uh there there has been a lot of people or have been a lot of people that have asked about a the way to change your cursor change the color of your cursor and also like size be able to maybe. change yeah 
uh, and also like other indicators in game, uh, mm-hmm. potentially also for like accessibility reasons, like color blindness and stuff like that. Uh, so it, it's something I think it is really interesting, and we should probably look into. Uh, so I've made a note uh, to uh, check in on that and see if it's something we can do. All right. I don't. Uh, I don't think it's. It would be crazy for us to be able to do that. Like I think it's super possible. Okay. So last but not least, I have probably one of my favorite questions that I got. Is <laughs> actually mm-hmm. from Reddit by Black Zero SA, and they ask. Why can I cast lightning spells but have to pirate electricity? But have to pirate electricity? Yeah, like you have to get electricity from, you know, the the charging charging stations over in Gloomrot, but you can cast well, lightning okay, spells. So it's a lore question. It's a lore question, yeah. It's different lightning. It's different lightning. <laughs> different lightning. You can't use magic lightning to light it up, no? I mean, they're they're clear. They're clearly different colors. So, like, I don't know what to tell you. That's fair. That doesn't make it obvious enough. That's fair. <laughs> different lightning. All right. Okay. So, before you go, I would like to thank you for taking the time to answer the questions I had for you today, and I'd also like to thank the community for submitting their questions. Uh, this interview would not have been possible otherwise. So, uh, if there's anything else you'd like to add, or maybe we didn't go over, feel free to say so now. Uh, no, we are uh, working on some fun stuff for this year, and we will be talking more about, like, the actual future of the game uh, later on uh, this year. Um, I, uh, to be clear, not a, a major content update for this year, but we will be talking about like what we're planning on later on this year. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm just, like, super happy to uh, be able to come in and talk to people again. I, I missed everyone. And uh, it's, uh, it's good to be back in the saddle and, and working on the game I love. Uh, thank you guys for making such an incredible community. Uh, that's always incredible to come back to. And uh, I look forward to doing more fun stuff together. All right. Thank you. And thanks for hosting. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. So what did you guys think of the interview? Let me know in the comments below. In case you don't know, my name is Shiloh Q. I'm a Shiloh Eats Quaintly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube. I post my schedule every Sunday on the YouTube community tab, so feel free to go check that out. Make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, Shiloh out.